Welcome to another edition of RCE. Again, this is Brock Palin. You can find us online at rce-cast.com or in the iTunes podcast library. I also have with me Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems, also very famous for the Open MPI library. Uh, Jeff, thanks again for helping me out. Hey, Brock, how's it going? All right. Good. Uh, so this afternoon we've got one uh, a project uh, that I've heard about for a long, long time, but I actually don't know too many details about it. So I'm kind of interested to talk to our guests and find out what's what. Yeah, at Michigan we've toyed with the idea of using XCAT. We were a big uh, uh, customer of one of XCAT's big supporters for a while, and uh, we're still using our old system. We're still kind of in the market for something like this. So. Um, our guests today are Valard Benicoso and Egan Ford, who are here representing the Extreme Cluster Administration Toolkit, also known as XCAT. So, Egan, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself? Uh, thanks. This is Egan. Um, I right now work at IBM. I lead one of our uh, uh, team of uh, HPC and cluster architects. Uh, I'm also the uh, leader of the uh, XCAT open source project and and its uh, creator. Val? I work for a startup company called Sumavi. I, previous to that, I was at IBM working on Egan's team. As one of the lead developers at Sumavi, I still contribute to the XCAT project and have a lot of fun with it still. And Valor was on both of my teams. He was both a, uh, a Linux cluster architect as well as one of the uh, core XCAT developers. So why don't you give us the 10,000-foot view of exactly what XCAT aims to accomplish? XCAT is primarily a uh, provisioning system. Uh, the goal from the beginning was to get an operating system on as many boxes as quickly as possible. Uh, it's still one of its uh, primary goals. Uh, originally, it was not for HPC. It was uh, development started in 1999 for Web 1.0, and there was this uh, uh, explosion of people that needed to uh, provision Linux at scale, and that kind of uh, fueled the uh, the ideas and the development and the design uh, of XCAC, because at the time, we, we couldn't find... Uh, at scale uh, provisioning uh, solutions. And so the, the big picture is, you know, get the OSs on the box. Because once you have the OS on the box and you have SSH, well, then there's, there's a lot of different tools out there that you can use to manage your environment. Um, however, as XCAT development uh, evolved over time, more and more uh, features were added so that they could use XCAT as more of a uh, cluster management and do more than just put OSs on the box. But, but of the things that XCAT does, you know, hardware control and, and console management and, and discovery and, and, and boot target control uh, and OS provisioning, they're, they're all kind of in the, uh, the provisioning family. Let's, let's get OSs on, on the machines at scale as, as quickly as possible. So what exactly is IBM's relationship with XCAT? Was this something that started off inside IBM? Because if I remember right, IBM had another tool that kind of did what XCAT did for its power series. Yeah, that's actually what I, Valard, was um, when I first joined IBM. I was tasked with the job of working with that group. It was a tool called CSM. And XCAT had already been created, but it was just used by the field technical people it wasn't used by the developers and it wasn't really sanctioned and has IBM's official way to go. And so, you know, Egan and his team kept plugging along and, and adding all these great features. And the one that was used for power, which was called CSM, actually just went end of life about two years ago. So and IBM's strategy has been that now XCAT will be its uh, HPC deployment tool going forward and CSM is end of life. And, and just to add to that, uh, for CSM, there was PSSP, and I, I think that may have been what you remember. That predates both uh, XCAT and uh, CSM. Uh, un unfortunately, PSSP wasn't, uh, wasn't available uh, for non-power platforms and uh, doesn't, doesn't support uh, Linux and, and uh, 
you know, some of the things that were taking place as we were doing XCAT for Web 1.0 and then later uh, HPC. So uh, something new had to be uh, created, and and uh, that's how XCAT got started. And then uh, IBM, as they started looking towards the uh, uh, future on, on a way to take the best ideas of um, – of PSSP and, and and the best ideas of, of XCAT, and then they and then they created CSM, uh, but but there was a, an, enough penetration uh, with XCAT. And XCAT was doing uh, some other things and supporting uh, other OSs like Windows and so on that that kind of fell outside of uh, uh, CSM. Um, but we, we kind of came back together again in 2007 and said, let's just take the best ideas of XCAT again and take the best ideas of CSM, and we we started together on on XCAT too. And it's a uh, new development, new team, new architecture, uh, you know, new code. And, uh, but, but, you know, 10 or 15 years of, of ideas uh, rolled up into that. So how did the decision come about uh, to open source XCAT versus keeping it proprietary? What was the thought process that led to that? Well, well my thought process personally was that I, I I liked open source, um, but uh, and and XCAT one wasn't open source. It, it came with source code, but that's not the same as open source. You 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 couldn't modify it and redistribute it like uh, traditional open source licenses. Um, it, it came with source code to offer a certain amount of flexibility, but but XCAT two uh, the there was a, a decision by all of us, and we agreed that. Uh, it should be open source. Uh, some of the interest in doing that for IBM was that we could develop cluster management with a smaller investment on IBM side because we would have the open source community to help with the uh, uh, development and, and, and the evolution of uh, cluster management. Uh, the HPC space moves very quickly, and so an open source development model and that type of collaboration with, with customers and users uh, uh, can help speed that along. And uh, we asked our customers, and uh, they, they came back and said, yes, uh, we, we would like something that's open source and something that we can contribute to and collaborate with, like a lot of other things in the uh, Linux HPC space, um, but we would also like support, and so we focused on creating something that was open source and and met our customer needs and our IBM needs. But uh, uh, but we were also able to come up with some way to provide uh, you know support contracts and so on for those that uh, for those higher maintenance customers. Gotcha. So th- then I'm kind of assuming that XCAT supports. A variety of different hardware and and software platforms. What's what's kind of the gambit of what you support? Uh, right um, now, as far as I'll take this one for for hardware. Right now, we we support a lot of the, of course all the IBM Intel machines, and then there's also the IBM P series and the Z series. Those those things are in there, but pretty much since we have this IPMI support in there, most of the white boxes will work with uh, you know doing remote power, and you know let's face it, a lot of them are all just the same Pixie boot you know, get up and going type uh, environments. But um, in addition to that, some of the guys from uh, HP actually wrote an HP plugin so that we have control over the blade, their their blade chassis. So we're able to do all those neat commands that we could do with, um, well, some of them that we could do with the IBM blade chassis. We can do those with the HP blade chassis as well. I'll just add to that, that... Um, uh, Support means different things to different people. And so what hardware XCAT works with uh, is, is one thing, and, and what the community supports uh, is, is one thing, and, and then what vendors support uh, via support contracts and things like that uh, uh, is another. And so, um, so, so when, you, are you, when you say support, I'm assuming that uh, the, the XCAT code, what, what platforms can it, can it automate? 